Hello everyone, my name is Ben and I'll be your trainer today. I'm happy to be here to talk with you about the Young Athletes Program. You might not be aware, but by hosting the Young Athletes Program, you are now part of a movement of inclusion. For many years, children with intellectual disabilities were removed from their peers during playtime, which then removed them from social opportunities. Young Athletes is breaking down barriers at a very early age to create lifelong bonds for all children with and without intellectual disabilities. That's right, Young Athletes is for children with and without intellectual disabilities ages two to seven. It is a great precursor to what the world will be for our kids with the Special Olympics program. It is a phenomenal opportunity for kids to get started early. It teaches them how to be confident. It teaches them how to be strong. It teaches them how to be friends. It teaches them how to just be a great person. Young Athletes is a gross motor skills class that was created in partnership with Special Olympics New Jersey and the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. In 2010, Minnesota first piloted Young Athletes, which focuses on eight different basic skills that all children need for gross motor development. These skills include foundational skills, walking and running, balancing and jumping, trapping and catching, throwing, striking, kicking, and advanced skills. Young athletes can be run in schools or as a community-based program. The community-based program can be run between 8 to 16 weeks. Community-based locations include, but aren't limited to, local YMCAs, colleges, community education programs, and so on. Today we're going to share with you a video tutorial of a Young Athletes community program. We'll highlight the structure of the class and how to present Young Athletes to the participants. Special Olympics Minnesota provides all Young Athletes programs with a kit allowing a quick and easy setup of the program. Included in the kit is equipment, t-shirts, paperwork, and of course, lesson plans. Best of all, this kit is free to anyone running the program. The only requirements to run a program are, attend a one hour training with Special Olympics Minnesota Young Athletes staff, fill out a volunteer application, complete a background check, complete the level one coaching certification. These are all provided by Special Olympics Minnesota. Young Athletes is a low cost or free program for participants. Please contact the Special Olympics Minnesota before you start the planning process to see if funds are available for a facility and or staffing costs in order to provide this opportunity at the lowest amount possible. The video you're about to watch is a look at how to run the Young Athletes lesson plans. Our lesson plan provides structure for all the participants in the program that is both easy to follow and will help set expectations each time you meet. All community-based programs should be running their Young Athletes program according to the lesson plan. Young Athletes has been found to progress a child's gross motor skill development seven to nine months in just eight weeks. It is imperative to establish a routine in order for the program to be successful, especially because we're working with children. Today, we'll review the activities from the first week of class. The weeks following the first session are all set up in the same manner. As part of the Young Athletes program, all site coordinators will receive an activity guide. This guide has easy to follow instructions for each of the activities you'll do in class. There are also short videos provided online or a DVD that will give you a visual breakdown of each activity. In this video, we'll tie all of those activities together in a cohesive lesson. All right, everyone, let's get started. Classes should range in size between six and 15 participants with a one to four instructor to child ratio. One of the instructors is designated as the site coordinator. This person leads the activities and serves as the main point of contact for the Special Olympics Minnesota State Office. Quick tip, it's always wise to recruit more volunteers to assist with children who enjoy running or in the general setup and maintenance of the room throughout class. The setup of your young athlete space is very important. The size of the room is not important. What is important is the limited number of distractions. When planning your lesson, use this dry erase board with the pre-printed lesson plan on it. Each week, use this board as a starting point to getting your lesson ready for the day. This is a great place to list reminders for parents. For example, the first day you'll need to make sure parents have completed the young athlete's application and collected t-shirt sizes to submit to the state office. Quick tip. A note on parents, as a general rule, young athletes does not allow parents in the room while the program is in session. You might hear groans from parents, but there are multiple reasons for this rule. The biggest reason is that it eliminates distractions in the room. Parents may not be aware of this, but many children behave differently when mom and dad aren't around. So on the first day of class, please let parents know that they have a space outside of the classroom to meet and that they should not leave the premise in case of an emergency or bathroom break. You can tell parents that you'll get them if they're needed and if parents are hesitant to leave their child, then that's okay too. You can give them a couple of options. First, have a designated spot where they can sit and ask that they just observe, or you can allow them to come and watch the last 15 minutes of class. 
Having parents outside of the room also helps with older siblings that want to participate as helpers. No child should ever participate in young athletes unless they're between the ages of two to seven years of age and have proper paperwork on file. Having said all of this, we still ask that you are welcoming to parents. Remember, you might be the first person outside of their home or family that the child will have contact with. Be reassuring with nervous parents letting them know young athletes is meant to be fun. Some parents may worry that their child just isn't ready yet or that they can do better. Remind them that success in young athletes is not measured by mastering all the activities. It is measured by having one success in each class no matter how big or small. At the end of class, spend time letting each parent know what their child excelled in during class. So as a parent, I would also say don't be afraid to set boundaries with our with our athletes that have intellectual disabilities. It helps our child in the school setting to be able to follow a school curriculum and to be able to follow what the other kids, if the other kids are standing in line, our kid stands in line. If our kid isn't standing in line, it's a reason to take our kid out of the class and recommend them to be in another room. And as parents, we're always fighting to keep our kids included in the schools. Sometimes it's easier than other times to argue that. And so what I would say is, as a trainer, you're helping our child by setting limits and not allowing them to have a tantrum or to sit in the corner and be unresponsive or to go off and do their own thing. So there's a definite kind of um, predisposition to having attention span, wandering problems, so don't beat yourself up because that just it's not that you're not running a class well. I think it's just that our kids are gonna require that extra kind of corralling. The best thing that you can do is not be afraid and not be afraid to ask questions. So all of our kids are different, and the more that you can learn about our kids, ask us specific questions as parents or as other people have been through the program, just understand that every experience is unique until you get used to it, and then we're here to help it, and it's, it's gonna be the best thing you've ever done. When children arrive, the only space set up is your meeting circle. This is a designated space in the room where poly dots are put in a circle on the floor. Children are asked to sit on a poly dot in the circle. That doesn't always happen on the first day, so don't worry. Once children are seated in the circle, start with a name game and continue the name game every week. This encourages participants to get to know one another and play together. Evan's here today. Evan's here today. Let's clap our hands. Since Young Athletes is an introduction to sports practice, stretches are very important to do before you start the activities. One of the most popular Young athlete stretches is the pizza stretch. The first 15 minutes of class can end with a short warm-up exercise or song. At this point, all children should be gathered at the meeting circle. While the group is in the meeting circle, have a staff member or volunteer start setting up the week's main activity stations around the room. Divide the room into small groups. Have children rotate through each session for five to seven minutes. This allows for more attention to each child as they practice their skills. The clips of the activities in our supplemental video will show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do each activity. Just a forewarning, during stations, activities, and group practices, the room will be very busy. This is normal. As site coordinators and volunteers, your goal is to work with the group to focus and redirect athletes to their activities. As you work with athletes week after week, you'll see big improvements in listening and following directions as long as you stick to the lesson plan. After stations are completed, have the group return to the meeting circle to refocus. You're always welcome to sing your own songs like The Wheels on the Bus or If You're Happy and You Know It, but most groups refer to do a music and movement song. Special Olympics suggests the album by children's singers Greg and Steve. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish all through the town. The dog on the bus goes roof, roof, roof all through the town. All right, if you can hear me, put your finger on your nose. Once the group has refocused and settled down, you'll work on a large group activity. During this time, all the participants and volunteers should be engaged in the activity. Encourage athletes to cheer each other on. <laughs> to wrap up activity time, connect all the stations that were practiced earlier in the class into an obstacle course. This allows athletes a chance to practice this week's lessons one more time. This is a great time to invite parents back into the room to see the hard work their child did in class. Finally, the best way to end every class is to gather the group in a meeting spot and have them share their favorite activities of the day. Some children might be nonverbal or shy, so work with them to figure out what they enjoyed too. 
Everyone gets to share at this time and you'll be amazed at how in later weeks participants will really start to open up. You may dismiss the class after your wrap-up activity or hearing the participants' favorite activities. Thank you for taking time out of your day to learn more about young athletes and how to run the program. Welcome to the Young Athletes family. Now that you are trained, get ready to have one of the most valuable volunteer experiences of your life.